Hello one and all, this is Luckless Love Locks bringing you Kathy Rain. It's developed by Clifftop Games and according to Steam this is the first game they've developed. So it's going to be really interesting to see what they do with uh, the same engine that's used for the Wadget Eye games, which uh, we all love so much on this channel. Uh, and it's published by uh, Raw Fury who published Kingdom, which is one of my favorite games of last year. So it's going to be interesting to see what this partnership can bring. I just, uh, it just came out today, just saw it, uh, one of my friends told me about it and I thought I would really like it. Detective game, point and click adventure, 2D pixel art. <laughs> Sounds good, let's dig right in. Hey you. Uh, hey. Oh man. Looks like we had too much fun last night. Oh god, this is so comfy. I'm just gonna lie here and suffocate on my own vomit now. I think we've all had those nights. I, uh, I had a thing I wanted to tell you. Uh-huh. This room sure looks different when it's spinning. So, I was browsing through the used book ads in the paper when I... Listen, Eileen, I'm totally excited about books right now, but... <laughs> I'm sure you are. Wait, hear me out! So... I noticed this article about a war veteran from Conwell Springs who just died. I remembered that you used to live there and everything, and... Oh, how I wish for joyful, blissful sleep. A and get this! His name was Joseph. Joseph Rain. What did you just say? You knew him, right? I knew it! I knew you'd know him! Oh, okay, we've got choices here. It was my grandfather, really don't want to talk about it. Uh hmm, okay. I haven't seen him since I was a kid. A lifetime ago. Hey, wait a minute. I never told you where I grew up. Oh, uh -oh. Well, I uh, well, I might have sort of looked you up. That is not cool, Eileen. Seriously. <laughs> I just couldn't help myself. Well, one of these days you're gonna help yourself to a restraining order. I'm just telling you this as a friend. I know. Well, anyway, you should know that the funeral is tomorrow. So okay. it's our grandfather that passed. Are you gonna go? I don't know. Good night, Eileen. <sighs> Good night, Kathy. Opposites of one another. College life, guys. 1995, day one, September 25th. Oh, oh god. god, make it stop. <laughs> we had the same reaction. Get up. Yes, please. Okay, look at alarm clock. Turn it off. Let's just turn it off. Looks like Eileen left a note for me here. Hi, Kat. Since it's such a long drive, I set the alarm so you won't miss the funeral. Thank me later. E. I'm so getting a new roommate. Well, I guess I should get going. I'm late enough as it is. Looks like there's a suitcase here. Eileen's girly suitcase. There's a sticker on it with her full name. Eileen Mildred Summers. Mildred. Mildred. <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna get her for that. I wish I could wrap up that fact and save it for Christmas. It's like we're the same person. It's awesome. Think about it. Okay. Got different verbs we can use. I'm no geek, but I know how to use one. So it's 95. Computer, that is. Not a geek. <laughs> so it's 95, so we got these old school computers. Use phone. What are we gonna call? Okay. Can dial dial the buttons. Might wanna pick up the handle first. Oh, fair enough. Dorm room, okay. Oh, we've got a list of contacts that we can dial. What happens if we uh Nope, not gonna do that. I can't deny that I'm a childish person, but come on. I thought I'd give it a shot, guys. So it sounds like we didn't really know our grandfather very well. So we're taking the death pretty... pretty easily. The Thing. One of my favorite horror movies. Okay, we'll find out a bit, a bit about her. Just some random band poster. Maybe not. That looks like Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction. Love that flick. Got it. It's like we're, we're a guitar player too. Play electric guitar. Think Help about it. Help me get it. rid of my last two roommates. 
Do we have both the bunks? Is that what's going on here? My electric guitar. Got it cheap from a lesbian I met at a concert. Good times. Can we play it? Nah, it's no fun when there's no one around to annoy with it. Fair enough. Okay, so do we need to pack anything? Looks like we've got an inventory, notebook, stun gun. Just very, uh, very precautious. Zippo lighter and pack of cigarettes. So we're a smoker. Combine. I prefer to smoke outdoors. Fair enough. So I guess we're not packing anything. I guess we're just taking off. You know, what? let's go through her stuff first. I can certainly see the appeal of blindly rummaging through Eileen's clothes, but seriously, I've got better things to do. Fair enough. Okay, let's uh, let's head out. Dreamcatcher. Very religious. where we're heading uh, I guess we can choose where we want to go on our sweet bike that's really cool okay let's uh, let's head to the cemetery do we miss it Oops. God, I really need a smoke. Does anyone object? Guess not. Dead people rule. Interesting thing to say. Bunch of tombstones. No time for that now. I'm late for the funeral. Price. Enter mausoleum. Think about the it. Family mausoleum. The family must have been fairly rich. Those things don't come cheap. It says price. Hmm. Wonder if that's going to be important. We are gathered here today to honor a person of great integrity, a pillar of the community, and a decorated war hero. His name was Joseph Irving Rain. We all remember his warm heart, his compassion, and his eagerness to help others. His passing while our loss is surely heaven's gain. Now we entrust our brother Joseph to God's mercy. We commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our frail bodies so they may be conformed to his glorious body, who died, was buried, and rose again for us. To him, be glory forever. Amen. Oh, Kathy, you big baby. Just talk to her. Is this our grandmother, I guess? Uh, excuse me, Mrs. Rain? Have we met, honey? You look strangely familiar. It's me. It's Catherine. What are how long we've been gone Catherine for? Catherine who? You don't recognize me? I guess it's been a while. I might be a bit taller than you remember me. Kathy? Bless my soul. Look at you all grown up. Oh, how I wish Joseph could see you now finally coming home. Let's hope he can. Wherever he is. A comforting thought, dear. Lord, how long has it been? Ten years? Fifteen? Fifteen sounds about right. I was six when Mom took me away. Twenty-one. Goodness. We have some catching up to do then. <laughs> I want to know everything. Listen, I'm not quite ready to leave yet, but... Why don't you join me at the house in half an hour? Sure, I'd love to. I passed it on my way here. It shouldn't be too hard to find. I'll see you soon then. I'm so glad you found your way back home. I can't wait for us to have a chance to talk. Same here. See you in a bit. Hmm. Wonder why our mother left. Like, why we left so early on. So there's the town in the background. Conwell Springs. Looks smaller than I remember it. 
I never thought I'd return to this place. Hmm. Rest in peace, Grandpa. I wish things could have been different. The coffin is lowered, but the grave hasn't been filled up yet. I think this price mausoleum could be important later on. Oh, the priest. Thanks. If you wish to find God, the Church of the Holy Trinity is always open to you. Is that so? Here, have a brochure. It's never too late to turn away from the path of sin. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean... We just met. As far as I know. And what makes you so sure I'm on a sinful path, Father? Wouldn't you say that prejudice is but a small step from the seven big ones? I simply meant that we are all sinful creatures, child. I hope to see you at the church. Don't get your hopes up, buddy. I'll pray for you. I wish you comfort in this time of grief. Get kind of a creepy vibe from him. The new location, the rain residence. Grandma, anybody home? Speaking of rain, it's like it started to rain outside. A single pair of boots on display. Boy, do we live in different worlds. <laughs> nice black leather coat, right up my alley. What is this? Red horse? Cute red horse. It's some old Swedish thing, I think. A Swedish family? Dog fighting. Grandpa used to love that stuff. Was Grandpa using the wheelchair? Huh. Never seen this around. Grandpa must have used it towards the end. An old wheelchair. Not too dusty. Probably used recently. Some pictures here. Grandpa. Grandma, maybe? A wedding photo from when my grandparents married. They look younger than I am now. Things have sure changed. It's a photo of this very farm from way back. Okay, we're at a farm. June 12, 1910 in the corner. Some kind of winter forest scene. I've always wondered if it's supposed to be Conwell Woods or not. So she in the living room, maybe? Wonder how Grandpa died. Oh, hello, dear. I was just wondering what took you so long. Sorry, I couldn't resist taking that old wheelchair for a spin. Oh, don't give me that look. I put it back. You haven't changed one bit. Always kidding around, just like when you were little. Come have a seat. We have so much to talk about. So, now, tell me about your life in the city. Oh, there's not much to tell. I'm going to school for journalism. It's my second year. I ride a motorcycle in case you missed it there out front. Ah, oh, that's right. Just like your father. Okay. Yeah, I suppose. I must ask, have you heard anything from your father? Anything at all? No, nothing since he bailed way back then. So our father I left us. expected as much. He disappeared without a trace. No matter, that's ancient history. How Sharon then? Sharon? Sister? Mother? What? Tell the truth? You had her committed to a mental institution? Um. I feel like we're gonna be uh, brutally honest. Mom is. I had her committed to a place where she could get some real help. I just couldn't take it anymore. Oh, I'm what sorry happened to her? That. In spite of everything that happened when she took you away. Yeah, about that. I'm sorry I didn't visit sooner, Grandma. Mom, she told me all these horrible lies about you and Grandpa. When I was old enough to understand what she was doing, I felt like it was much too late. It wasn't your fault, dear. You were a child. I'm just happy that you're here now. Me too. So, what about you? How have you been doing all these years? 
I've been lonely ever since the accident. There's no denying that. The accident. What accident? Goodness gracious. We missed out on a lot, I guess. you don't know. She took you away before it all happened. Don't know what? I will never forget that dreadful day. August 16th, 1981. It was the middle of the night when Sheriff Truman knocked on our door. He had Joseph with him. I couldn't even recognize Joseph at first. All dirty and wet with an awful blank stare on his face. Like his soul had been ripped from his body. Since that day, he never spoke a word. Forever confined to that blasted wheelchair. Mm. Really? For all this time? I had no idea. It came as a shock to all of us. That's horrible, Grandma. That's like 14 I'm so years sorry. ago. Thank you, dear. Incident 81. That's actually a month exactly before I was born. I was uh, born September 16th, 1981. Interesting. So can we use this to ask questions? Why do you think Grandpa suddenly left that night in 81? I haven't the faintest idea. He acted very peculiar not long before it happened, disappearing for hours at a time. At first I even suspected he was having an affair. When I asked him about it, he just said he was chasing old demons. It must have had something to do with the war. Maybe? Maybe it was post-traumatic stress disorder? Grandpa always had a hard time showing weakness. I don't know, dear. I I'm just speculating. I didn't think too much of it at the time. Joseph was a man of few words. I'm sure he just didn't wish to burden me with it, whatever it was. Hey, did anyone say anything? What did the doctors have to say about Grandpa's condition? Persistent vegetative state. That's what they call it. Oh, he's that bad. By now. One doctor said it was a stroke. Another claimed it was a seizure. The third hack tried to sell it off as a severe infection. It's all a load of tripe. I had an MRI performed on Joseph. It's one of those state-of-the-art head scans. Yeah, I've heard of them. Yes, well, according to the scan, his brain was completely intact. They thought it was a technical problem at the time, some kind of glitch. But the result was the same after three different scans on three different machines. Eventually, they had to confess that they simply had no credible explanation for the state he was in. Hmm. And this injury just happened to occur on the very same night he mysteriously disappears? Indeed. I refuse to believe it was a coincidence. What did Sheriff Truman have to say about the matter? Twin Peaks, Sheriff Truman. Not much. He said they simply found Joseph in that condition on the outskirts of town. The sheriff was convinced there was some kind of foul play involved, but... No kidding. The investigation turned up nothing. He later said that he was sorry, but that he was forced to close the case. You know, I could try to find out more about this. You're welcome to try, dear. Some kind of closure would mean the world to me. Okay, I think I'll head over to the sheriff station for a little chat then. Would be nice to witness police doing some actual police service for once. Sure, you go ahead. Let me know if I can be of any more help. Wow, I'm intrigued already. So we've got a new location. I assume it's the police Bye, office. Bye, Grandma. I'll be back later. So long. Police department. Let's look at these pictures. Grandpa in his Air Force uniform. Looks to be in his early 20s. I wonder if there is, like, some kind of supernatural stuff to this game. Planes, planes, and more planes. Drink? Huh. It would be kind of funny to see her reaction, but no. I try, guys. Okay, let's head over to the police station. Has begun. Well, I can already tell this guy. This this sheriff looks very welcoming. Some young cop looks a bit familiar. Land of the free. 
very welcoming music. Hey, Sheriff. A bunch of cops lining up for a photo. The one in the cell. The bum in the cell. Well, shit. Okay. Hi. Hello. Wow, he's really young. Do I have to commit a crime to get your attention? Because I seriously will. Ma'am, I'm really quite busy at the moment. Hey, wait. I know you. I'm pretty sure you don't. Yes, I do. You're Kathy. Kathy Rain. My reputation precedes me in a kind of but not totally creepy way. Aw, oh, come on. It's me, Lenny. Lenny Marks. Went to school together. I'm going to be honest. That's the way I'm going to play it. I'm drawing a blank. Really? You don't remember us playing when we were little kids? Not really. Sorry, buddy. Darn. Well, that's a bummer. Anyway, what can I do for you today? Ask about the incident. I wanted to ask if you know anything about my grandfather's accident. I really don't know much beyond the rumors. The sheriff may have more information, but even he probably doesn't know anything that isn't in the report. It happened before either of us worked here. I mean, okay. right. I think I'll have a chat with the sheriff then. Sure thing. His office is to your right. Guy would have been like six, seven years old, right? Well, gotta go. See ya. <laughs> oh, God. Sheriff Truman. That must be the sheriff. He looks grumpy. <laughs> He looks really grumpy. A photo of the sheriff shaking hands with some bald guy in a suit. Probably the mayor. It's always the mayor. A gold medal of some kind. Just some photo. I can't see it clearly from here. Trying to get an idea for what kind of man he is. I can't see it clearly from here. I walk up. Just some photo. Guess not. Yeah, let's talk to him. Hello, Sheriff. Do you have a moment? Not really. Make it quick. Do you know what happened to Joseph Rain in 81? He had a stroke in the woods. That's what happened. If that's all there is, why would Sheriff Truman open an investigation? Because this is a Sheriff standard Truman. Procedure. A general occurrence report always has to be filed. I see. Did you know him at all? No, I haven't been in town for long. Man sure has one hell of a reputation, though. It's been over a decade since he was put in that wheelchair, and people still talk about the man he used to be. It's like he was a cult leader or something. Sounds like a conspiracy theory to me. Could be, but you know what they say. Things too good to be true usually are. Okay, this is cool. Could I have a look at that report? Absolutely not. They are official police documents. I'm not surprised. Why not? I thought filed police reports are public record. Not in this state, they ain't. Okay, we need to try to convince, um, family. Hmm. But I'm family. Maybe. Doesn't that count for something? You can say to yourself family? I've never even seen you before in this town. You barely just said you just got here. Guess what's complicated? Not to mention illegal. Handing out evidence to anyone who asks for it. Lenny? Lenny, a little help here? Don't you agree that he's taking by the book too far? Well, uh, boss, she is his granddaughter, really. I don't think it's any... Don't you think I know that? There are rules. Am I the only one in here who cares about the law? Too much coffee? Try not to pop a vein. You want to see the inside of a cell? Really? Oh, cuff me, officer. Spare me the torment of your rhetorical questions and veiled threats. Just follow the rules like everyone else. I've had enough of this nonsense. Fine. I'm not giving up. Maybe I can just go over and grab it? Tons of miscellaneous files. I don't see anything labeled as police reports, so those must be elsewhere. Okay. Lanny, I need you to do something. Just some photo. I can't see it clearly from here. It's my mother's These are the reports. You'll have to get her again. Lots of police reports organized okay. alphabetically by the looks of it. Maybe Lenny will help us out. The same. Just use your imagination. I'm expecting something nicely wrapped on my desk by the end of the week. Uh, okay, boss. Hey, Lenny. 
Hello, Kathy. What's up? Should have pretended to know who he was. Damn it. Hey, I need to see the police report from 81 when my grandfather was found by the old sheriff. I'd love to help, Kathy. The files are right here behind me. But you better check with the sheriff first. Okay, I'll do that. Well, he's not gonna let us, is he? So. Well, gotta go. See ya. Need to find a way to get Lenny off Looks of this like desk. Looks like talking isn't gonna help me get that report. I'll have to take matters into my own hands. I wonder what's behind those doors. Let's take a look. Must be the hey, cells. What's the deal with that bum? Yeah, yeah, okay, it's the cells. Bum. <laughs> Does the bum have a name? Looks like an incarcerated bum. Hey. What? I can't hear you. Okay, let's turn this off. Thanks. That was getting annoying. Seems like a nice guy. Hey. Hi there. <laughs> So, why'd they put you in that cell? Uh, well, uh, it's all just a big misunderstanding. Is that so? Yeah, I, I didn't mean to steal anything. I was just using my pockets to move the beer to the checkout. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, worst okay, excuse totally. I have ever heard. For your information, I have a deadly fear of shopping carts. I take my last <laughs> statement back. This excuse is even worse. Hey, it wasn't your father who was killed by a shopping cart when you were eight. Uh, I sure hope not. Cardophobia? To be fair, mine wasn't either. It was just Uncle Bob. But that doesn't mean it was any less traumatic, mind you. To this day, I still get nervous breakdowns at grocery stores. I think I've heard enough, buddy. You're right. We should stop before the flashbacks begin. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe he'll help us? I mean, what can we offer him? You need to keep the blonde cop out there busy for a while. I do? Ten bucks says you do. Hmm. I'd say my services in this matter are worth at least 20 bucks. Nine. Fifteen. Eight. Fine. Ten. Seven. <sighs> Deal. Yes! Okay. We're so, awesome! Uh, what am I doing again? Distract that young cop in the lobby. I don't hmm. care how you How's do, he gonna it, do it as long as you keep him occupied for a while. Seizure. Okay, then. Let me know when. Will do. Let's just take a look around. No wanted posters. I'm disappointed. If there's anything else we can use. Just a bunch of boxes filled with office supplies. A computer monitor. Probably recovered stolen goods. There's no way small town cops would be that up to date with the modern world. <laughs> it's so funny. These games are so quaint. I grew up in this time, so it's like... I know exactly where she's coming from. Grab various tools. An axe, a sledgehammer, and some other heavy tools. Okay, let's grab some very carry tools. around and too noisy to use in here without getting caught. Okay. Open evidence lockers. They look sturdy enough. Wouldn't be able to break them open without taking my time and making a lot of noise. Maybe later. So how do we clean floor with mop? If I ever feel the urge to clean, I'll know where to go. Let's go out and, or do I just have to tell him? Hey. Hi there. Okay. See ya. Do I go out here? Hey, the jail is off limits. You shouldn't be in there. Oh, sorry. I, I just heard someone yelling. Uh, I think that guy in the cell needs some help. Ah, <sighs> oh, what now? Okay, there we go. I have to make this quick. Search files. You can do it! Okay, let's have a look. Uh, 8, 16, 81, 11, 40 p.m. An individual was encountered on the side of a dirt road a few miles from Con Conwell Springs, blindly walking forward with his eyes wide open. The subject was identified as Joseph Rain. He did not respond when touched or spoken to. He appeared to be dirty from head to toe and wet up to his knees. Mr. Rain was fiercely clutching a small tape recorder, complete with tape. Being cooperative, he he could be led into the squad car and, and transported back to town. Uh, so at 11.25 p.m. 
some hour later, uh, picked up Mrs. Rain and brought her along with Mr. Rain to the emergency room at the community clinic. And then the next day, upon routine inspection of the patrol car, a tape recorder was found discarded on the back seat, filed as evidence in locker number five. We need to get that. Locker number five. Hmm, I'm gonna have to get my hands on that recorder. Okay, let's find the key to locker number five. Got it. Okay, now get get out of there. Is he gonna let us go back in? How's the paperwork coming along, Lenny? Uh, okay, I guess. Okay, there we go. Maybe halfway through. Think about open. All right, got it. Okay, now how do we play it? Do we have anything? Dictaphone? Police report. Brochures. Combine dictaphone. Oh, remove tape. Okay, let's play this. Let's see what it says. Note to self. Remember, the perfect bouquet consists of three red roses, a blue violet, and two yellow tulips. I've been working on my research in the attic at night. I just don't want her to worry. She has enough to think about with everything that's been going on lately. With Sharon and Kathy. Anyway, I'm getting closer to finding the source. I have a theory, but I need help. I'm gonna have to involve somebody else. Hmm. Working on something, and maybe this person that he got involved into the investigation had something to do with the state he ended up in. Very intriguing, guys. This game is cool. I'm going to wrap up this episode here. I hope you enjoyed it. This is Luckless Lovelocks, signing up for now, and I love you all.